Nya, nya, nya. Pa, mba, ba, bue, Zimbabwe. <clears throat> the broken Bunsen burner burns so bright. South, Jamie. Southeast Asian Peninsula. Hey, hey, Jamie. Yes. I think the only line we need from you today is drivers who switch to progressive could say big. Cool. I just got to finish my warm ups. <clears throat> foul, foul, throw in the towel. History, history. Switch history, to progressive history. today. Santa ski slalom in a salmon skin suit. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure your seatbelts are fastened as we travel the globe for Wiener Schnitzel's hot dogs from around the world. Our first stop is the Aussie Dog with horseradish aioli, grilled jalapenos, and onions. Then it's on to the Texas Dog with bacon, grilled onions, and tasty barbecue sauce. We end the trip with the Cabo Dog, smothered in ooey gooey cheese sauce, spicy jalapenos, and green pepper hot sauce. Enjoy a tour of bold flavors during hot dogs from around the world at Wiener Schnitzel. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Last night, we were talking about Robert Maxwell and how news sources have come forward and put out sworn testimony stating that Robert Maxwell was banking Jeffrey Epstein. Now, we've talked about this for a very long time, that Maxwell played a, a bigger part in the creation of this operation than has ever been let on before. And you get there by putting all of the pieces of the puzzle together, right? And that's, that's where we were at. And we all been speculating for quite some time, right? That this was the case. But now we have sworn testimony that backs that up. And like I said last night, obviously we have to be cautious to make sure that it has legs and that it holds up to um, any sort of vetting process. But how many times do we have to say it? Where there is smoke, there is usually fire. And one of the key players in this whole entire deal, this whole situation we have now arising about Maxwell financing Jeffrey Epstein, there's a, there's a person who is in the middle of it, who is in the middle of everything, and yet this ex- sorry excuse for a man somehow has still not been swooped up. If anybody has ever ne- been needed to get black bagged and thrown into a van in the street, it is this man, Jean-Luc Brunel. Now, Jean-Luc Brunel is the person who supposedly came forward with this information, told a friend, blah, blah, blah. Then the friend came forward with the testimony. Now, the common denominator here is Jean-Luc Brunel. We keep hearing about him over and over and over in Jeffrey Epstein's escapades, and yet there is not a brighter light being shined on him. I touched on this with the fantastic Roberta Glass on her podcast recently, and we were talking about how I believe that Jean-Luc Brunel is one of the most important key parts of this whole entire puzzle. And the fact that he seems to fly under the radar when he played such a huge part in facilitating all of this, as well as the abuse, well, it makes me mad. And it it gets me going when the French are not participating the way that they should be. This isn't something that just happened in the United States, right? Where uh, the French can thumb their nose up at us. This is a worldwide intercontinental sex trafficking ring and abuse occurred in France. So it's probably a good idea to take a deeper look at what occurred. Jean-Luc Brunel needs to be put on blast, he needs to be found, and he needs to be brought in to answer questions under oath. Our article today is from artvoice.com, and this article was published one week ago today, and the headline is, Epstein Associate Jean-Luc Brunel, Rape and Trafficking Allegations on Both Sides of the Atlantic. The author of this article Paul Serin. A series of photos of Jean-Luc Brunel playing with alleged sex trafficker Ghislaine Maxwell on Pedophile Island was published by UK's The Sun and New York Post. 
The troubling picture is brought back to the headlines the role of a man once described by a fellow agency owner as a public danger. And not only by an agency owner, we've heard from the girls themselves. Thizia has talked about him. Many other models have come forward. We had the 1988 60 Minutes program. So it's not just one person saying John Luke Brunel is a sicko. It's not somebody with an axe to grind looking to cancel culture Jean Luc Brunel. That's not occurring in this Jeffrey Epstein case, folks, all right? So save that shit for where it actually applies. Because in this case, all of these disgusting scoundrels that I talk about here on this podcast have been mentioned in court documents, okay? This isn't just some hodgepodge, let's try and ruin people's lives. This isn't some sort of politically motivated hatchet job. This is an absolute evisceration of any and everybody involved. Brunel, Epstein's associate accused of rape and sex trafficking on both sides of the Atlantic, is reportedly fed up with the allegations. Oh, poor Jean-Luc Brunel. You're fed up with the allegations, huh? Well, come out of your hidey hole and speak to the authorities. I mean, I'm sure that the French authorities don't want to have anything to say to you. I mean, you're probably hiding in Roman Polanski's basement. But be that as it may, why don't you stroll your ass over to the local FBI office and have a chat with the station chief? Fed up with the allegations? Man, shut up. Fed up with the fact that you're not arrested. I'm fed up with the fact that it's been decades that you've been able to get away with abusing people because you're rich, you're famous, and you had powerful friends. So shut up with your fed up uh, by the allegations nonsense, Jean-Luc. Apparently, the man formerly known as Jean Cole, Johnny Ass, better brace himself for even tougher times. Yeah, well, known as Johnny Ass, huh? That's, he's just such a cool guy. These, these people with all of their cool nicknames, Johnny Ass, G-Max, really? Breaking news, you dorks are not that cool, alright? And without your money, you would have been, you would have been getting atomic wedgies and swirlies in school bunch of epic dorks. By now, Brunel, who founded model agencies in France and the U.S., has been repeatedly accused of rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment by several former models over the span of decades. And yet, even with all of the accusations, even with all of the finger pointing, with all of the girls who have come forward, Jean-Luc Brunel continued to operate in his capacity as an agent. In fact, he took it a step further, and with the assistance of his scumbag friend Jeffrey Epstein, started his own modeling agency. Isn't that nice? By now, Brunel, who founded model agencies in France and in the U.S., has been repeatedly accused of rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment by several former models over the span of decades. Brunel was also allegedly a vital part of Jeffrey Epstein's sex trafficking ring, having reportedly provided over a thousand of his daughters to the king of pedophiles. And when they say daughters, it's in quotes, obviously, air quotes, um... That's what Jean-Luc Brunel called these little girls that he was pushing on Jeffrey Epstein and trafficking to the United States and elsewhere. It really bothers me that this dude is not on blast more. It really bothers me that the media hasn't went with a full court press to try and find out where this dude is. You mean to tell me that the media, with all of their resources, the legacy media, can't put together some sort of fact-finding mission and, and search this guy out. Somehow they're able to find terrorists in caves for interviews. They're able to get an interview down in, a, you know, with a drug lord somewhere. But you mean to tell me that this modeling agent, Jean-Luc Brunel, this epic, decades-long abuser of women, is somehow pulling the juke move on you? Sounds to me like the media just doesn't care. 
The 74-year-old agent and talent scout is not hiding, according to his lawyer. Mr. Brunel is actually in France and is at the disposal of the justice, says Miss Corinne Dreyfus-Schmidt. Well, that's nice. Good to know that he's hiding out in France, like I said. Probably barricaded down in Roman Polanski's uh, basement, getting the bunk beds ready for when Kevin Spacey makes his dip down there as well. That's how sordid and sick all of these people are. I wouldn't be shocked, honestly. Birds of a feather. He will make no comment to the press. Yeah, okay. I don't. You know what? This guy... I don't understand how he is not being completely hounded. Again, I don't really understand the dynamics of France, like I said yesterday. I'm not I'm not going to sit here and make pretend I know anything about France, right? Because I don't. I don't know how the internal workings of the politics are there. I don't know any of that stuff, really. But I do know this. There is a predator hiding in their midst, and nobody has bothered to back away from the wine and cheese to make an arrest. Brunel is psychologically frail, adds Miss Dreyfus Schmidt. He is fed up. A torrent of horrors has poured out on him. Oh, give me a break. They're all victims, right? So Jeffrey Epstein was this all-encompassing, powerful man who had all of this mental uh, uh, pull on all of these people and controlled all of their moves. That's what they all want us to believe. But in reality, we all know that they all played a part willingly to enrich themselves in whichever way they wanted, be it money, power, or otherwise. Horrors poured on him. How dare they use that defense considering what he is accused of, considering what we have heard throughout the decades. It's been a year since a preliminary investigation was opened in France. Brunel's attorney is baffled as to why her client has yet to be summoned to testify in this investigation. She is certain that French justice is just wasting its time. Oh, look, again, I don't know about the French judicial system enough to give you an educated response there. But we know for a fact that things in France are a bit screwy right now, geopolitically speaking. So, I don't know if we're ever going to even see this sort of investigation into Jean-Luc Brunel in France, folks. But what I will tell you is this. There should be some sort of Interpol bulletin put out, and if he leaves France in any capacity, he should be swooped up and extradited to the United States forthright. In France, it does not advance, leading us to think they have nothing going, nothing to go on. The certainty of impunity emboldens his legal team to a ridiculous level. Most of the charges against Brunel have prescribed in France. Do these girls think they are in the United States to get the jackpot since the compensations amount, the compensation amounts there are so substantial? So that's what they all think it's about, right? That's the tone they'll try and set. Uh, it's about money. Uh, do you think you're going to get paid out like in the United States? Once again, thumbing their nose. Meanwhile, letting this predator hang out in their midst. So I don't, uh, I don't understand about the, uh, the whole compensation situation here. I don't, the only, the only compensation that I'm looking for is this dude to spend the rest of his life in prison. Good Lord, talk about tone deaf. They piled, piled, and piled the accusations in the press while we wait for him to be summoned, but we still haven't been. It's, therefore, urgent to say publicly that he is not on the run, adds Miss Dreyfus Schmidt. Again, I don't believe any of that. We heard the same shit from Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers. Oh, she's not on the run. She's willing to come forward at any time. Yeah, okay. Meanwhile, she's hiding out in New Hampshire, a stone's throw away from Canada. Give me a break. All of these people are such liars. At the end of July 2019, the Paris Prosecutor's Office assured the AFP that it would continue its verifications and discussions with the American authorities before deciding whether or not to open an investigation. Testimonial evidence against him is pretty strong. In testimony from 2011 in the United States, Virginia Roberts accused Epstein of having abused very young French girls who had been sent by Brunel to him as a surprise birthday present. 
Jeffrey was boasting that they were 12 years old, brought from France, because they were very poor and their parents needed the money. So we've talked about this allegation several times, and this is one that gets me superheated. I feel like out of all the people in this case, Jean-Luc Brunel has the best chance to dip out on justice. And that simply is because his passport and the, the, the protection that being a French citizen offers him as far as extradition goes. But I swear to you, I am not above black bagging this dude like you see over in the Middle East, tossing him in a, a van and bringing him someplace for an interrogation. That's how much I think this dude was part of this. The clear implication of these, as yet unproven, allegations is that he would be an international sex trafficker, besides being an alleged rapist, that is. Well, yeah, look, it's not just one person saying this or a couple of people who have an axe to grind. This is fact, okay? Jean-Luc Brunel was a huge part of Jeffrey Epstein's operation. Fact. Jean-Luc Brunel and Jeffrey Epstein were super close. Fact. Jean-Luc Brunel is being credibly accused by multiple women. This is also a fact. And you know what is going on here? For some reason, the people of France in power are not pursuing it. The question that needs to be asked is, why? Also, incredibly compelling physical evidence is present that suggests the same. A message was found in phone pads retrie retrieved from the garbage of Epstein by the Palm Beach police. Noted in 2005 after a phone call from Jean-Luc, he has a teacher for you to teach you to speak Russian. She is two times eight years old, not blonde. And what they're intimating here is to speak Russian, just like when they say speak Greek. I'm sure you know what that means. So they're intimating here to speak Russian, meaning... It's a Russian girl who will be involved in relations with Jeffrey Epstein. And they use all of this kind of code speak in these worlds, right? In these seedy ass trafficking worlds. This is not hearsay. This is judicial evidence gathered with an impeccable chain of custody by Detective Joseph uh, Contreras' team from Palm Beach PD. Credible allegations against Brunel are nothing new. In 1988, a documentary by CBS Network featured ex an ex-model on condition of anonymity accusing Jean-Luc Brunel of having drugged and raped her. Remember, we talked about this earlier, and a few months ago, we talked about this at length, maybe even a month ago now, a month and a half ago, something like that. We talked about it at length, how this uh, CBS program, I believe it was a 60 Minutes program, really laid out the whole entire situation about Jean-Luc Brunel and how that was so many years ago. And yet here we are still talking about this sick bastard. The whole modeling world was aware of his crimes, confirmed journalist Craig Pies. Jean-Luc's reputation was well known in the fashion industry. Many models told that Jean-Luc offered to give them to his friends, to go out to dinners and to sleep with them. The girls who were resisted got no more work because they had not slept with Jean-Luc or his friends. And you know what bothers me here too? If everybody in the modeling and fashion industry knew, then why didn't any of you step up to stop him? Nobody socked this dude in the mouth one night over drinks. Nobody thought it would be a good idea to bust this dude up. Because I have news for you. I show up to a meeting with my colleagues and I know that one of you is abusing women and uh, trafficking children. Believe me when I tell you, you're going to catch that three-piece. Because I'm sick and tired of people like this running around so brazenly and nobody's stepping up like it's not their problem. Like this isn't a societal problem. Like this is just a problem for those who are being abused. Wake the fuck up. This is a societal problem, folks, and we all need to step up to the plate, and we all need to protect those amongst us who are the most vulnerable. Former model Courtney Sorensen accuses Jean-Luc Brunel to have sexually assaulted her in 1988. He tried to push me into his bed. I resisted. He persisted. He tried violently to rip my shirt. I managed to escape from the bedroom. 
After the assault, castings and photo shoots became rare for Courtney. She believes herself to be the victim of retaliation from Brunel. We know that's how they roll. These sick-ass perverts in power. Oh, you want this movie role? Sure, get on the casting couch. Oh, you want this modeling job? Come over here and do X and X with my friends. And so the story goes. And these poor girls continue to be exploited. She describes the world of modeling as a meat market. After the CBS documentary aired in 1988, the prestigious Ford agency stopped working with Jean-Luc Brunel. In 1995, Brunel's troubles continued to press on. Author and journalist Gross, Michael Gross wrote a well-documented book entitled Top Model, The Secrets of a Dirty Business. And we read an article by Michael Gross who talked about his book and about his night out with Jeffrey Ep- I mean with uh, Jean-Luc Brunel and how disturbing it was. But again, I don't understand how these people can roll like that. Like if I was with somebody like this and there was some girl giving me signals or telling me that she was being abused by this dude, there would be no detente. There wouldn't be any, oh, well, let's have a drink and discuss this. There would be simply rage, bro, because I'm fed up with people like this. I am at the end of my rope with people like this. Gross remembers the words by late Jerome Bonovier, the respected boss of a French agency. He is a public danger. He knows exactly how to handle fragile girls and what they're looking for. Another acquaintance explains... Brunel and a well-known gang invited the girls and put drugs in their drinks. It's like an episode, it's like watching Hostel, right? I mean, these people are that sick. I wouldn't be surprised if they were involved in that kind of shit at this point. That is how sick and perverse I find Jean-Luc Brunel. In 2009, the French agent was subpoenaed to be heard under oath in the U.S. after the filing of the first complaint against Epstein in Florida. He never appeared in court. He played hide-and-seek, ensuring through his lawyer that he was abroad and unavailable. Of course he was abroad and unavailable. Going to hide out in France, huh? You and good old Roman trading some uh, tricks of the trade, you two sick sons of bitches. Maybe a hellfire missile through your window would be fantastic. In 2015, when at odds with his former mentor, Brunel confessed... Epstein asked me to leave the region and go to Europe and Asia to delay the testimony. Of course he did. Jean-Luc Brunel is just another scummy son of a bitch, right? He, another one who has no friends. He's ready to and willing to throw anyone possible under the bus. The problem is this, though. Jeffrey Epstein's dead. Ghislaine Maxwell's arrested. And now you, Jean-Luc, who also held a leadership role, are now left to catch the flack. Also, in 2015, Brunel announced legal actions in France and the United States to expose the false allegations, but none of his suits have prospered. On July 5, 2019, the white evening of the ultra-select Paris Country Club, tanned, laughing out loud, drinking drinking champagne, champagne, arm-in-arm with friends, Brunel is living the high life. There's a picture of him here in this article with him at a white party with two of his friends living it up. The next day, Jeffrey Epstein was arrested disembarking his plane in New York, arriving from guess where? Oh yeah, Paris. So, let me guess. They didn't hang out? They had nothing to do with each other there, huh? They weren't friends. Jeffrey Epstein wasn't hanging out with him in Paris. Right, that never occurred. No, no way. The Epstein arrest and subsequent death in prison resurfaced accusations launched against the French agent by former models, including Dutch Thysia Hoosman, who claims to have been drugged and raped by Mr. Brunel in the 90s. And we talked about uh, Thysia Thysia here on the program before and her tale. And she deserves justice, folks, all right? What she went through was absolutely disgusting. And the fact that this man is still running around living the high life while Thysia is still dealing 
with all of the the repressed feelings and the situations that have occurred because of what happened to her. It's just, it's so unacceptable that this man is running around right now. Thysia Hoosman, talking to Europe One about her abuse by the Frenchman, whom she accuses of rape, said he is a man with two faces. My modeling agency in Belgium sent me to work for Jean-Luc Brunel and told me to stay with him in his apartment. Of course I found that weird. But my agent had encouraged me. She said she could help me a lot. He's, she said he could help me a lot with my career. And that's the, the trap a lot of these gals fell into, these young girls. They want to be models. The modeling industry is uber competitive. And they think that Brunel can give them the leg up. Then that's what they're going to do, especially if their own agent is advising them to do so. He had two faces, she continues. He could be very professional, very kind, do things professionally. And at night, he would become a completely different person. Brunel Brunel kept telling her, one evening, we're going to sleep together. When I got there the first day, I I asked where I was going to sleep. And he said, in my bed. I said, no. And he didn't answer any further. I stayed up for hours before I ended up sleeping in another model's bedroom on the floor. And can you imagine? This was your daughter, your sister, your friend. These are human beings we're talking about. Not just disposable items. And that's how they were treated. As disposable. And then, at this juncture, Brunel raped her. He gave me a drink, some kind of cocktail. And after I drank it, I felt really weird. The sounds were different. He said, come and rest in my bed. I remember it was blurry, continues Hoosman. He pushed me on his bed and he ripped my clothes off. The next day, I woke up naked in his bed with bruises on my legs and an unfamiliar kimono over my shoulders. When I realized what had happened, I felt so bad, ashamed, and dirty. What I regret most is not having filed a complaint. My agent in Brussels laughed at me and she told me that it was not professional for me to have left Paris. Think about that for a minute now. Try and put yourself in her shoes if you can. And think about what she must have felt like. Her agent laughs at her, tells her it's not professional. She's raped by Jeffrey Epstein and she's left hanging. And this man has been doing this for decades according to allegations. It was terrible to see how many women after me were provided to Epstein. I was very angry Everyone knew, like my agency in Brussels, they all turned a blind eye. Now, we are trying to motivate other victims to speak up, maybe more recent victims, so that the police are forced to act on it, Hoosman hopes. And I, I agree with her 100%. Her coming forward was very brave. It was a very, very brave move for her to make. And I think that her story needs more publicity and needs to be shared more widespread. Because, again, folks, Jean-Luc Brunel is a danger to society. He is still lurking out there, and who knows what he is up to. The noose also... The noose also began to tighten for Brunel in America, where sex trafficking and pedophilia (laughs) do not always fall under a statue of limitations. And that's right. If there's a way to snag this MF and get him wrapped up in a case in the United States, you best believe that is what we are going to do. I had sex with him many times between the ages of 16 and 19, said Virginia Roberts. He didn't care about the conversation. He just cared about the sex. Brunel brought young girls ages 12 to 24 to the United States for sex. Epstein told me he slept with over a thousand of Brunel's daughters. All I have seen seems to confirm it. Uh, Over a thousand of Brunel's daughters. That's how they thought of these people. Their daughters. That was their sick psyche. That was their mental defect. These people were not wired like you or I. There's no rehabilitation for people like this. There's no fixing them. There is only chemical castration and long, long, torturous, lifelong years at the bottom of a prison somewhere. 
On the Paris prosecutor's investigation on the Epstein affair, the majority of the reports that investigators received actually concern Jean-Luc Brunel. On the judicial front, we have nothing to charge him with because the crimes are time-barred, said French police source. But the investigation continues, even with Epstein dead. Kind of seems like a way for the French authorities to cop out, right? Oh, well, Epstein's dead, so we have nothing to go on, and Jean-Luc Brunel's crimes, well, that's all statue of limitation stuff. Last July, a complaint for, a complaint for, set for acts of sexual harassment was filed against Jean-Luc Brunel. Ten women claimed to have been raped, sexually assaulted, or sexually harassed by the now 74-year-old quote-unquote man. Of these ten testimonies, the most recent is the key. As it concerns relatively recent fact crimes that have not yet broken the statue of limitations. So let's see what the French authorities do with this. If they don't take this one and run with it, then you know that Jean-Luc Brunel is being protected from on high. A young French woman in her 20s has filed a complaint in recent weeks for sexual harassment against Jean-Luc Brunel. The facts described are less than four years old and are, therefore, not prescribed as the prosecution confirmed to the French press. Other testimonies are, a 46-year-old Dutch woman claims to have been drugged and raped by Jean-Luc Brunel in a Parisian apartment in 1991 when she was 18. Then, New Zealand model Zoe Brock also came forward with claims of being sexually assaulted by Brunel and also professionally punished for having managed to escape. Do these stories seem similar to you yet? When these girls come forward with what happened to them? What do you, what did they all get together and decide that they were going to go after Jean-Luc Brunel? Give me a break, okay? This guy's as guilty as the day is long, in my opinion. An, un, uh, an unidentified Canadian also testified to the police. Four other alleged vi- uh, survivors were heard later by investigators, a judicial source told the press. They have all reported prescribed crimes so they could not file a complaint. I would like to finish where I started, with newly released pictures from the island featuring Brunel and Maxwell. While it's impossible for me to know for sure when I look at this photo below, in my opinion, it's hard to reconcile the narrative that Ghislaine and John Luke would be partying. He holds her head way down and the dog is sniffing her, sensing something is wrong. That's abuse in my book. No two ways about it. Uh, yeah, for the dog, maybe, having to sniff stinky-ass Ghislaine Maxwell's head, but I don't know what, where the author is going there with that uh, little uh, last paragraph, but... Elaine Maxwell was not a victim. She was not part of being abused. She was a leader, had a leadership role. Her and Epstein were interchangeable, in my opinion, 1A and 1B. Jeffrey Epstein was the face, and Elaine Maxwell was the brains. And Jean-Luc Brunel was their most prolific procurer of underage girls. Yet, he is still not arrested, And he is still enjoying a nice wine and some cheese while these girls are still searching for justice. If you'd like to contact me, you could do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, folks, I will be back later on and we will pick back up. And now a game of Commercial Chicken brought to you by Progressive, where we see how long Flo can go without talking about insurance. Ready? Go. Okay, so um, did you see... That game the other day? (laughs) The refs, right? I mean, come on. They were totally out to get us. (laughs) That always happens to uh, to our team. Drivers who switch to Progressive can save big. Okay, you win. We can't help but save customers money. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. At Keck Medicine of USC, we take on the toughest cases and put your needs first with exceptional clinical expertise, a personalized approach to care, and commitment to patient safety. That's the Keck Effect. And just some of the reasons why Keck Hospital of USC and USC Norris Cancer Hospital continue to be ranked among the nation's top 20 hospitals. 
Learn more at keckmedicine.org or call 800-USC-CARE. Keck Medicine of USC, beyond exceptional medicine.